Hey, I'm Jonathan, and this is Redhead, and today I'm gonna build this pendulum array, known as a pendulum snake. I was always intrigued by these demonstrations, so I've decided to build my own compact version to put on my desk. I also made a second video in which I try to explain how this actually works. There's a link in the description, please check it out. The base and the pendulum holder are made of some scraps of oak veneered plywood. I started by gluing the template using a generous amount of glue stick. We don't want the template to peel off before we were done cutting. Using a jigsaw, I started cutting the serrated side of the template. Trying to cut as close to the line as possible without touching it. I find that using fine teeth blades, usually meant for metal, results in a much cleaner cut. Using a sanding block, I sand it up to the line. I secured the whole part on its side and started transferring the relevant markings from the template to the plywood using a square. Then, using a center punch, I made a small divot that will help when drilling the holes. I drilled the outermost holes using a 2.5mm drill bit and the center holes using an extra long 3.5mm drill bit to make sure it will go all the way through the part. I started cutting the other side and made sure I'm staying about half an inch from the template. You'll see why in a second. When removing this piece, we reveal the extra long holes we made earlier. They'll be used as guide holes when drilling partway through from the other side using an 8mm drill bit. Then I finished tracing the template with the jigsaw. Because the previous holes were drilled on a weird angle, the cuts weren't exactly clean. That's why I waited until now to cut right to the line and reveal these nice looking holes. After some light sanding, I center punched and drilled the holes for the legs using a 5 8 of an inch forcener bit. In order to remove the template, I soak the paper with mineral spirit using my lucky sock. After a few seconds, the paper peels right off. I mixed up a small amount of 5 minute epoxy and glued two small eye hooks in the outermost holes of every section. The reason I'm gluing these hooks instead of screwing them is because there's simply not enough room for screwing the hooks that are in the inner corners. From the other side, I screwed some M4 bolts in the center holes, so that they will just poke out the other side. We'll see what these are used for shortly. Now we started working on the base. I cut the plywood to the desired dimensions. I marked where I need to drill the four holes to connect the legs. Using a sharpie, I marked the depth I want to drill to on the forcener bit itself. That way, it's easy to make repetitive holes. For the legs, I used some 5 8 of an inch copper pipes. I've cut them to length with a pipe cutter and went over them with steel wool to give them some shine. After two coats of spray lacquer, both on the plywood and the copper, it's time for assembling. Now I can start working on making the 9 pendulum weights. Using a cutoff wheel on my angle grinder, I sliced a 35mm diameter steel rod into 13mm thick slices. The angle grinder leaves kind of a rough surface, so I sanded each face on the belt sander. In order to prepare the weight for soldering, I roughen up the surface a little with a file. Then put on some flux and finally a couple of pieces of solder. I made a small loop from a piece of metal wire Using an oxypropane torch, I heated the weight until the solder melted Then, I dipped the small loop in some flux and carefully placed it on the molten solder using a pair of tweezers After it cooled down, I went over it with a couple of coats of matte black spray paint In order to connect all 9 weights in very specific distances, I came up with the following system. 
I fixed some measuring tape to my work area and started laying out the string, marking it both at the desired distance and at the zero mark. Now, all I have to do is align the two markings in order to get the desired length. After threading the string through the weight and the two eye hooks, I made a simple knot, making sure to align it with the two markings from before. This system is good to get the weight roughly in the right distance. However, it's definitely not enough for our purposes. That's why I've added the M4 bolts earlier. I designed and 3D printed these plastic caps to go between the bolts and the strings. Now, when we turn the bolts, we have fine control over the pendulum's length. After connecting all 9 pendulums and fine-tuning them, this is what we get. Build plans and 3D printable models for this project can be found on my website. If you're interested in buying something like this, I'll have links to similar products in the description. And don't forget to stay tuned for my next video, in which I explain the physics behind this. If you enjoyed this project and want to help me produce more like it, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, bye!